I say, she'd only been visiting me a couple of weeks this time. Uh, she'd come up from New Orleans uh, on her vacation. You and your stepsister weren't too close then. No. I don't know what you mean, Doctor. I mean that she'd come and stay with me uh, once a year or so. Uh, Virginia liked to get away from cities, she said. Dr. Robinson, whatever the cost is for Virginia, anything, I'm only an artist, but I could get it somehow, whatever the cost. Your stepsister will receive the best of care here at Highland, Mr. Weston. The best of hospital care. And psychiatric care. Dr. Robinson, can't you let me see Virginia? In a few days, perhaps. Right now, it wouldn't be good for you or for her. I, I want to see her. I had her placed in 23. What was your stepsister doing in the audience, Mr. Weston? She had a kind of a dancing job down there. She really didn't tell me very much about it. Why did it have to happen to her? The way she stood there screaming. I'll never forget it the rest of my life. Associated from reality. You're right, Doctor. I shouldn't have seen her like this. The knife. I... Well, I, I'd better be going now. Perhaps we'll have some news for you by Thursday or Friday. Friday, I have a sculpture class in the village. Try something a little different from the tests we made last month, Virginia. Tell me what you see in it. An ink blot, Doctor. Yes. Well, what figures, or people, or things? I see two men crawling. They're crawling through with knives. No. You just want me to speak about it again and again. I don't want to think about the knife. Don't think about the knife. You never had the knife. You mustn't feel guilty. Virginia, listen to me. You need help, and I want to help you. I want to do everything I can for you. I want to get out of this place. How long have I been here? You can leave soon, when you're well. I'm trying to help you be well. Virginia? Tell me you know I'm trying to help you. I 
know you're trying to help me. I'll do everything I can for you. You will do all you can for me. Shall we go back to your room now, Virginia? I know. I shall have my rest now. I'm 23. Take a letter to Charles Chapman Weston. The address is in the files. Dear Mr. Weston, I should like to give you a report on the progress of your stepsister while she's undergoing therapy here at Highland. In all frankness, I must state that any undue optimism at this time would be most ill-advised. <laughs> Sanitarium. I'm sorry, I cannot call Dr. Greenwood in his bungalow after 8 p.m. Could you call in the morning? I was sure his headaches were psychosomatic. Bye. Dr. Greenwood spending plenty of time with his new patient. Keeping office hours in his bungalow now. <laughs> So good. There's nothing wrong with me, Esther. You're much better than you were six months ago, Virginia. Will I leave you soon and go back to dancing? Would that make you happy? Yes. How can I ever thank you for all you've done for me? For letting me have so much freedom and taking care of me so well. I'll always take care of you, Virginia. You need me and I... You need me. Remember that. You need me to look after you. Yes. I know I do. But I get frightened sometimes and think about that night. Don't think about that. It's over. It never happened. No. It never happened, did it? I had a dog once. Did I ever tell you about my dog? But I don't remember where. I don't remember where it was. Can I have a dog again? When we leave here, you can have anything you want. But you're not leaving. You're a doctor. Are you going to leave here too? Please don't leave me. Do you trust me? Yes. Will you do anything I say? Yes. Please don't leave me. Oh,
Barney, you're on an expense account. My rent's due. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful specimen? I build a career on heads like that. <laughs> waiting for. And this, believe me, gives me a great deal of pleasure. I'm introducing to Ella Madhouse a newcomer. And I'm sure you're going to agree that once you've seen her, she's going to be around for a long time. I give you Yolanda. Miss Yolanda Lang. <laughs> Our name's right, but we love them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> love you too, Joni. Nice to see you haven't been raided yet. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, never give this guy a check. Never. <laughs> Dropped in to catch my new cupcake, huh? I tell you, Bill, she is the greatest thing in the history of nightclub entertainment. Matches. Uh, what time uh, uh, you get uh, off tonight? Uh, 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 don't touch the candy, Junior. <laughs> where, where did this chick come from? A left field. She walked in here absolutely cold. Would you like to meet her? Yeah. I gotta go to work sooner or later. Well, come on. Yolanda? Yes? I want you to meet a friend of mine, Bill Sweeney. Does a nightclub collar for the Times. How do you do? It's quite an act you have. Thank you. Oh, I thought tonight was the best ever. He doesn't like to be patted. Lie down, devil. Well, maybe we could have that drink after the show tonight, Yolanda, if you're not too tired. All right. And you can always mention me in that column of yours, honey, if there's any room left over. Or at least El Madhouse. That's a promise, Joni. Yolanda Lang? Yolanda Lang. Who made up a name like that? Does it matter? Not to me. Even if your name was Susie Schwarzkopf, I'd, uh, I'd like to take you out and see what trouble we could find. Oh? If you 
your research, you understand. Of course. How tall are you, Yolanda? With heels. With anybody. Me, for instance. With heels, I'm 5'10". Without 5'7". And you're Norwegian? Swedish? Originally. Nobody could ever accuse you of talking too much, could they? I've never found it necessary. Be careful. Sure. What is it? It's just a figure. Weird-looking dame, isn't she? Uh, you've never worked around here before, have you? Well, uh, just a little bit around. Yolanda. This is my manager, Mr. Green. Bill Sweeney, Mr. Green. You're the newspaper man. I like to think I am. I cover the night beat. Ride the police cars, write about the messes people get into. Everything from who's playing footsie with who this week on up to who's murdering who. Well, Miss Lang doesn't give interviews. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Your land must change now. Everybody in this business wants publicity, Green. Surely it wouldn't do any harm to talk to him. Miss Lang doesn't need publicity, Mr. Sweeney. Good night, sir. Suit yourself. Maybe the Garbo routine can work again. But I wouldn't bet my life on it. Still a heck of an act, Yolanda. Even without publicity. What did you tell him? I told him nothing. Why can't I talk? You must do as I say. Please don't talk to people like that. You were better tonight. You remembered almost everything. Where did you get this? I told you weeks ago to get rid of it. I don't want you to have it. You see yourself in it. You brood over it. It disturbs you. It brings back everything I want you to forget. I don't know why you insist on keeping it. I'm not going to take it away from you. I want you to be strong enough to destroy it yourself. I'm sorry. I don't like to talk to you like that. You must let me decide certain things. You must let me handle strangers. I know. In a little while, we'll have enough money to go to Europe to live. We won't have to hide anymore. I can become Dr. Greenwood again. There'll be no more men staring at you. Just the two of us with nothing to worry about. I hope so. I'm going by that little French restaurant and get some supper. I don't drink enough to obscure the taste of Joanne's cuisine. You'll be ready to go back to the apartment in about an hour. Joanne asked me to have a drink with her afterwards. I'll pick you up about 12. looking out my window. This blonde with the dog is waltzing by. All of a sudden, the dog starts growling at something. There's some guy in the shadows, and he pulls her down there. The dog goes for him, and he takes out like a bat. The next thing I know, the blonde folds up like an accordion. Thanks for the ride, Max. My guest, any time. Hi, Chuck. 401? Looks like it. Sweeney, if this is the most excitement you can find tonight, you're in trouble. It's only a drunk. That's life. Somebody else called. I was upstairs. I heard a crowd. I came down. All right, everybody, stick around. What's the trouble? Doctor, officer, a woman. I don't know why your citizens can't get better service for our taxes. Don't get too near the door. 
Because she's drunk. <laughs> Look, she's been stabbed. Somebody call her. Hey, Bell. A dog like that can be a devil on wheels in a fight. Call her wagon. Homicide. Don't shoot him, Mac. He's not mad. Yolanda? Yolanda. Easy, devil. Easy, boy. Yolanda, keep talking. He likes the sound of your voice. Scotty, see if you can try an edge around behind him. Protect yourself. We may get out of this without too much trouble. Keep talking. Four score and seven years ago, four fathers brought forth on this continent some life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There'll be little change in temperature. Fog, no clouds near the coast. It's raining, it's raining, there's pepper in the box. All the little ladies are putting on their frocks. Now, Scotty, now. Somebody's got a blanket. Here comes the wagon. The doctor must have scared off whoever it was before he finished. you say her name was? Yolanda. Yolanda Lang. Let's see the file on Lola Lake, the last Ripper case. Exactly one month ago. Well, he wrote a good story, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Attack practice the same way. Same cut across the belly. I've seen that statue before. Hey, Sweeney. In the wrong morgue, aren't you? Mac, you know Captain Blind. Blind? James Irvin. Homicide. You got the right, Meg. Quite a file I have you, Captain. Why are you so interested in Lola, Sweeney? She's last month's news. Any resemblance to the attack on Yolanda Lang seems more than purely coincidental. I know you'd love to trade in that honorary police badge for a nice shiny one like mine, but what would you do without all the excitement, glamour, and frivolity of your upholstered sewers? I'll take the crime beat any day, even if it means running into you blind. Well, I wish you luck. Thanks, I'll need it. Yolanda, what actually did happen that night? I was walking. The devil growled at something and pulled me down the stairs. I saw a shadow coming at me. The devil jumped. But the man got away. Yolanda, where did you know Lola Lake? I don't know her. That's Lola. The Ripper did a better job on her. She's pretty, isn't she? She was then. I'm afraid. You've got a right to be. You'll try it again. I didn't mean that. You will help me, won't you? Maybe I can help you now, Yolanda. Who sent you that statue? Statue? The one in your dressing room, the naked figure, the frightened girl. I haven't got a statue in my dressing room. The one on the shelf, you told me to be careful. Sometimes I can't remember things. Many things. Lola 
listen to me. I'm trying to help you. Yes, you are, Aunt Two. I think you really are. Yeah, but I'll find out a few things. Please don't try. Why shouldn't I? Because... Because I don't want you to get hurt, too. I go green. Strict orders that the patient wasn't to be disturbed at all. Did Miss McDonald say that you may come up here? That's right. Well, she'd rather get a name in the papers. And... All right, then you must be through. Just one little question, Doc. Are you married, Miss Lang? I'm not married. Thanks. Hope you feel better. Pants for a real story, aren't you, Junior? Maybe. But I know there's got to be a story when two sexy blondes are knifed the same way and both have the same taste in statues. Mrs. Trace, Miss Lake's actions prior to murder. Shopping, movie theater. Made a purchase at the gift shop of Raoul Renard, 731 Craig Street, approximately 7 o'clock last evening. Ah, yes. I remember. Fascinating group of characters Miss Lake associated with. Raoul Renard, who's he? Raoul loves beautiful things of all kinds. Can I go after the story? Let neither rain nor snow nor uncooperative witnesses keep you from a great story, William. But don't forget, wear some protection around your gut, at least after dark, huh? OK, Walter, I'll be careful. Huh? Change your mind? A thought just occurred to me. No guts if I back out now. And maybe... What did you call it? Mimi. M-I-M-I, -I, the girl's name. Screaming Mimi. Obvious pun, of course. The catalog number is SM1. And an individual in the manufacturer's office with a sense of humor, or the macabre, decided that SM stood for Screaming Mimi. Who was the sculptor? That I don't know. Exquisite little thing, isn't it? Although, as I say, it never sold. Does anyone else in the city carry it? No. I have an exclusive on the line. You said there were three of them. Yes. The other was sold the next day for cash. To my own curiosity, I, too, wondered who might have wanted the other one. I'd like to buy this one. Well, I think perhaps I am a little weary of the lady. If you like, it's 42 or 45 dollars. Something under 50, I believe, with the irksome taxes. Oh, Jan, uh, could you help us a moment, please? Certainly. Uh, Jan, Mr. Sweeney has persuaded me to let him have the Mimi. Oh. Gift wrapped? Just plain, dear. Good evening, Manor House. Miss Yolanda Lang's apartment, please. They don't accept any calls. She'll take this call. I'm sorry. Would you like to leave a message? No. Skip it. Well, honey bunch, I think we're one jump ahead of the cops. All I have to do is find your sister.
Like I've got a case of opening night jitters myself. Can't seem to keep it steady at all. All your nerves this evening, Mr. Green. Ten bucks, you can't keep her from falling off. What does your lander have to make a hundred before you'll try ten with me? Green, there's a statuette of a woman screaming. Ever see one? Is this your idea of a joke? It was. You win the bet. It was worth it. I wouldn't have believed you. But I do believe the ages of this piece of paper. Very clever, Sweeney. Your own homemade lie detector, hmm? No, your reaction indicator. You know about them? I know something about psychiatry, as an amateur. To your ill health. To yours. Happy hunting, Sweeney. May you get to the Ripper, or vice versa. Perfume is that? A maiden lady aunt of mine just visited San Francisco. What was it? Incense. Chinatown. Don't inhale it too far. It hasn't bugged me yet. They sound like they rehearsed in separate buildings. Uh, how, how have you been, Joanne? To Yolanda gets back Friday, I have to work an extra show each night. Well, how should I be? How's your psychosis today? I, uh, I just came up for a little gin and sympathy. And to find out who sent Yolanda a statue she had in a dressing room a few weeks ago. Well, I didn't see it. What statue? A dame, a few clothes on. Besides that, she was practically nude. You must have seen it, Joanne. You see everything. So, all right, I'm a liar. Tell you I didn't see it. So important about a statue anyway. I wish I knew. And I'd give a big red apple to know who sent it to her. Well, why don't you ask her? Or is that too simple? I get the same lines from her I get from you. She never heard of it. Listen, Joanne, give me the dope. What's this Indian sign Green has over her? You're asking me? For all I know, the way he looks after her, you'd think a bosom was something unique. I thought you and Yolanda were real true blue chums. I'm chums with everybody who works for me. Interview over? Sorry, girls. I didn't realize it was just tea for two. Don't call us. We'll call you. Sister, any damage to the chest, he'd be glad to pay for the repairs. Brother, you couldn't even pay for the headlights. Sweeney, why I have to, to sit here. Keep your eyes peeled. Watch the faces. See if there's anybody you remember being on Leonard with you that night. Okay. 
Why would anybody take a chance and show up tonight? In a crowd like this, in the dark, maybe it's not so much of a chance. And a killer who's tried it once has got to find out how she looks now. Find out, maybe finish the job. Ladies and gentlemen, with a certain amount of pride and a great deal of pressure, I mean pleasure, our employer, our friend, our own Joanne Masters. <laughs> When Mrs. O'Leary's cow kicked the lantern in Chicago town, they say that started the fire that burned Chicago down. That's the story that went around, but here's the real lowdown. Put the blame on Mame Put the blame on Mame. Mame kissed a buyer from out of town. That kiss burned Chicago down. Put the blame on Mame. Put the blame on Mame. See me, Captain? Thought you might sit with us. Well, I think I better check on Pat. How is she, Green? I think your men might have been a little more considerate of her state of mind the last few days. There's no reason to keep badgering her with a question. You want her slightly badgered or slightly dead? <laughs>
Hi, fellas. I'm having a little welcome home party after the show for Yolanda. You fellas like to hang around? You too, Sweeney. Oh, Genevieve, sweet Genevieve, the days may come, the days may go, but still Oh, brother, the joint's loaded with talent tonight. The blissful dreams of long ago. I'll have another one, Paul. And don't shortchange my friend like you do these other citizens. <laughs> Bill, not that I'm hacked about it, but how come Joanne allows all these characters here to soak up the juice this way? You don't think this party is for laughs, do you? Half these characters are here because Blind wanted them. You mean they're taking someone in tonight? I think so. If Yolanda can identify them. Well, now, man, don't, uh, don't, don't give me that crazy stare. I can't even play mumbly pegs with a knife. Anything happening around here? For a while, it was like being back in traffic detail, trying to keep out all the luscious who wanted to get her autograph. But it's quieted down now. Well, I'll see you. How goes it, Blind? All oh, ripping. Do you mind telling me something? Just as a friend, nothing else. Number one suspect, male or female. I'll make a deal with you, Sweeney. I'll answer you that one when you answer the $64,000 one. Who could have done it that had any motive? Having a good time? Where's your star? Preparing for the grand entrance, I guess. Her impresario is beginning to roll down the red carpet. told you to stay back there and keep your eye on her. Well, she's out here, isn't she? Well, I figured that when she left her dressing room, she was coming out here. Congratulations on your efficiency, Captain. You want to help me find her? Or do you want to make a speech? Give me the department. I want to talk to McIntyre. I was worried about you. I didn't want to stay there with all those people. They're strangers. What brought you back here? Back where? Devil and I were just taking a walk. This isn't just any street. You were here before. Let's forget about it. Strange, I would be back here. Isn't it? Why would you be here? Just a crazy hunch. I'm glad you have your crazy hunches. Please stay with me for a while. Can I tell you something? You can tell me anything. Green wasn't wrong when he said I was interested in you because you were good copy. Doesn't matter now. We're together. Now listen to me. Maybe the main reason was I. Know. I... Right now, the only reason is I 
need you very much. Why did you wait so long to tell me that? People must be looking for you. What do you think about I don't want to think about people. Sometimes I wonder how much people think about me. Don't wonder any longer. It's a different world. I'm a different person with you. Just one hour. Don't go away. What? I lose you too much. You start remembering like that. Both promised, no questions. We are happy together. That is all that matters. Just happy. No questions. No questions. Not even your real name. <laughs> I tell you, I don't have a name. I'm just a girl you found in the mist one night. Isn't that enough? Talk too much. <laughs> much too much. Uh. Just a bad dream. Oh, hold me tight. Don't ever let me go. What was it? What can't you forget? Green? You've got to get away from him. You'll never be happy until you do. I want to, but I can't. Just leave. Please. Today, in an hour. Don't tell him where you're moving. It's as simple as that. Is it? Of course it is. I'll help you. I wish I could be sure. You can be. Oh, you're so good to me. I'll be with you in a little while. I'll put a lot of dot, dot, dots in the column and pick you up at your apartment in about an hour. I would be ready. Apartment 301. I think I can remember. <laughs> Keep her running, Ben. I'll be down in a few minutes. You're gonna have another rider, the most beautiful girl in the world. Stop me, Green. I've already done that. You have a visitor. Yolanda, what's the matter? Tell me. She evidently realizes she doesn't need you. Is there anything else you want before you go? Glad to get your things and let's go. since this morning. He said no questions. Don't ask me. 
You've got to decide, darling, once and for all. didn't last forever, did it? Please understand me. Did I say what you want? at me. You said what you wanted, didn't you? You worried about me. You haven't slept at all, have you? I don't know which was worse. Not knowing what happened to you when you disappeared or, or realizing that you must be with him. You treat me as a child. You watch me and you guard me. You won't let anybody near me. Because I have to. You have to be watched. Do you realize where you'd be if I didn't? Locked up in some cell, not knowing the difference between what was real and what you dreamed. Yes, I look after you and I watch you and I guard you. I've given up everything for you. Don't I have a life of my own? No! Not without me! You're nothing without me! I don't care. Just leave me alone. I can't. I need you, too. This came, Mr. Sweeney. Thank you, Mrs. Myers. Look, strangers can ask me about anything else I've worked on, but screaming Mimi is personal. How is it you know about it? Why shouldn't I? I tried to sell it for you. I'm Horace Sweeney of the Gansler Night Company. Gansler? I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Sweeney. Usually the company sends Mr. Burke up here, you know. You don't want to make any more like it, do you? No. I, uh, I just like it myself. We've only sold about 40 altogether. It shouldn't be sold anyway. You people shouldn't try to sell it. And I shouldn't have made it. Too personal. The way Virginia stood there screaming, it stuck in my mind until I had to make it or go crazy myself. After I made it, I should have destroyed it. It was like selling your own sister. I stayed drunk a whole week. I don't blame you. She was a swell girl, you know, Mr... Sweeney. Uh, Sweeney. She was a little mixed up sometimes, but... Aren't we all? I guess I am. They call me Crazy Charlie around here, you know. They probably call me Crazy Sweeney where I come from. To craziness. To our kind of craziness. The other kind. Who was Virginia? She was my stepsister. She used to come and visit me here every once in a while. One morning she was out there in the shower and an escaped maniac came at her. All bloody with a knife. I heard her screaming and I grabbed my rifle. But the shock sent her to Highland Sanitarium. A wonderful doctor took charge of the case there for nothing. Seven months later, he wrote me the bad news. She died. You didn't even want to go to the funeral, huh? I can see how you wouldn't feel like it. It's quite a story. 
I can't quite figure it out, Charlie. A girl was attacked some time ago, Lola Lake. She had a Mimi with her. A month later, another girl, Yolanda Lang. You've never heard of them, have you? I didn't think so. Well, a guy knife Yolanda, too. And she had a copy of the statue. Don't look at me. I haven't got the answers. I hoped you would. A part of it, anyway. Thank you, Tracy. Awful busy, Junior. You can wait. Mimi, meet Walter Krieg. Walter, meet Mimi. Screaming Mimi. Charm, now get that thing out of here. Walter, listen. Listen good and fast. Remember? Lola Lake had one of these. I showed it to you in the news shot. It was splattered all over the alley. What the devil are you getting at? The Ripper. He's got Mimi's sister. I saw it in Yolanda Lang's dressing room before it disappeared. The Ripper went after Yolanda exactly the same way. Now for the statue. Mimi here was made by an old duck down the coast. He made it after his stepsister was practically killed in front of his eyes. Walter, the Ripper, and Mimi, they go together. As sure as we're standing here. How, I don't know. But I've got one wild idea that might give us an answer. And make us look like real smart guys. The Ripper's got something like that? He sent it to Yolanda just before he went after her. A nice little morbid calling card. You think he stole it back from her after he went for her and missed? Right. It was and is a fetish with him. He wouldn't be without it. Lola Lake had one with her when she was attacked. Yolanda was sent one just before she was attacked. I tell you, it's got to be more than just a coincidence. Keep talking. If we print the picture, somebody might recognize it, remember where they saw it. Then we've nailed the Ripper. A bellboy, a landlady, a friend, an enemy. Nobody can forget something that looks like this. Send her in. Are you with me, Walla? Front page. <laughs> Somewhere in this city, a murderer is staring at this statue. He is the murderer of Lola Lake, the psychopath who tried to kill Yolanda Lang. This statue is his trademark, his fetish. Have you seen it? Yeah. And just because Sweeney likes to play with his typewriter, we spend the night here in Yolanda Lang's basement listening in and waiting for a killer to appear instead of playing pinochle at home like any sensible cop. <laughs> Boy, imagination is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Sweeney sure is full of it. Not Yolanda's phone. Well, I'll stick with it. Anybody who tries to contact her may give us just the lead that we need. About time, pal. Well, Sweeney. Uh, we were just talking about you. Hi. I found him out on the sidewalk looking up in her window. I thought he'd make a good pigeon for gin. Any objections? You don't expect to get an interview with her tonight, do you? I mean, one that you can print. Thought something might pop around here. Yeah, so I gathered. You know, Sweeney, I think I've been letting you ride around in these prowl cars a little bit too long. Next Christmas, I'm going to give you the giant size do-it-yourself detective kit. Thanks, Dad. Maybe it is a long shot, but it might break this thing wide open. Look, you want to write, write fairy tales. Come on, sit down, shuffle the cars. Not a bad story. It's been just a peachy evening, you all. I'll be thinking about you in the sack. Anything? Blanks. Robert staked out across the hall. He said you come in an hour ago and must have gone right to sleep. What are the odds of the Ripper taking a crack at her tonight? Uh, I don't go for odds. Anyway, we're watching her like hawks. It's the house phone. The lobby. Yes? Who is it? I'm downstairs. Well, all right. If you want, come up.
was almost asleep. What's the matter with you? You look so strange. Pack a bag. We're leaving right away. I don't know what you're talking about. We're not leaving until Sunday. Don't argue. We haven't much time. But I don't understand why you changed our plan. Your friend Sweeney has found out too much. They're liable to find out everything before long, all about us. I didn't give up everything for you just to have it end like this. How could anyone find out? I don't know how much you've told him or how much you've lied to me. We're in trouble and we've got to leave. But you told me I was all right. You told me everything would be all right. I thought I could help you. I didn't know that you'd disobey me and keep that fetish and use it for some kind of ritual. I got rid of it. You still have it. Your mania is fixed on it. And if anybody else knows you have it, you'll be arrested. Now get it for me. No. Virginia. You were all right until you saw that thing. And it undid everything I'd been able to do to help you. Because it represented perfectly everything that you felt when, when the shock sent you to the sanitarium. I don't want to listen to you. I don't have to listen to you anymore. You're lying. You've got to listen to me. I've got to make you understand. You saw the statuette, and it hypnotized you. Only this time, there was a transference. You saw yourself in it, but your mind couldn't accept it again, couldn't stand the horror. This time, you wanted to become the attacker, the killer with a knife. And when you followed Lola, you... Stop it! What are you trying to make me say? I didn't kill Lola. And whoever did try to kill me... Look at me. Don't you know who attacked you? In the hospital, I started to wonder. I was afraid to think so. Did you do it to punish me? I knew that I could make only a surface cut. Wouldn't really harm you. I had to do something desperate, shock treatment. I had to reverse your fixation. And you said you'd never hurt me. You said you would take care of me. And now, you tried to kill me. I tried to save your life. I'm still trying. Now do as I say. I say, put on a coat and come with me. I've always looked after you, Virginia. I always will. You trust me, Virginia. Virginia! Virginia, listen to me. You tried to kill me before. Are you taking her away from me? Virginia. Devil, stop it. Wagon. It won't make much difference at all, Lloyd. Miss Lane, are you all right? Did he hurt you? What happened? This ought to make you a great story. 
Where's Yolanda? She rushed out, not a scratch on her. We made another try. This time, the dog must have pushed him out the window. All I heard was the yelling. Was she all right? He didn't touch her. Mr. Sweeney. Sweeney. Sweeney, you did get the ripper. I said you would. She knew that the statue was a fetish with me. I knew that when she read your story, she'd know that I killed Lola. And I tried to. The devil stopped me again. Sweeney. Take care of her. She needs help. Roberts, you stick around here and wait for her. See that she's all right when she comes back. Okay. Well, I guess that about wraps it up, boys. Shorter and sweeter than I figured it. Oh, Sweeney, how long did you know about this statue? Sweeney! How many? Five. Well, another pigeon, boys. Want to join the game, Sweeney? You're a doe I'd love to take. Has Yolanda been here? Yeah, about ten minutes ago. She breezed in here looking like the rabbit. What'd she want? She wants some dough. Anybody see her leave? Oh, she puttered around the dressing room for a few minutes, then she walked out. Red hailed her a cab. Yes, Sweeney. Ben was cruising. I hailed him. Ben, huh? I didn't hear where she told him. She just said stop here and took off. Last I saw her and the dog, they were headed down that way. Thanks, Ben. Night, Bill. Good night. Did you see a beautiful blonde? A great dame with a great dame. It's a flea bag. Thanks. Checked in the one with the dog. Down the hall, 306. Who'd she tell you she was? I ain't the curious type. Checked in about an hour ago. I said I didn't take dogs. She said I'll pay you extra. I let her. Thanks. Who are you? What's it worth to you? you want? Why are you running away? I'm not running away. You can tell me the truth. Green did enough lying before he died. What did he say? That you need help. Somebody to look after you. You do, don't you? Virginia. I'm Yolanda. Yolanda Lang. You know I am. It was a shot in the dark, but I hit it, didn't I? You are Virginia, Charlie Weston's sister. How did you ever work it to get out of that asylum? It was a hospital. I'm not insane. Don't say I am. Now, Mimi was yours, wasn't it? It had to be the way you told me to be so careful with it. You bought it. 
Nobody sent it to you. Did you recognize yourself, Virginia? It wasn't mine. He brought it up to the apartment. I don't know where he got it from. Green was the ripper. He couldn't be. He wouldn't attack you. He protected you like, like a child. He used to. In the sanitarium. Of course. Green, your doctor. He could sign the right papers to get you out. Lie to Charlie. Protect you. And he almost got away with it. Right to the end. Almost. He is guilty. He went to your apartment at night to get the Mimi. He knew you had it. Knew you killed Lola. He was as sure of it as I am now. But he shouldn't have told me he didn't know Lola. That was one thing that wasn't tough to check. You once worked together in the same club. You saw her go into Rowles and buy that statue. Then you met. Something clicked the wrong way. You thought you had to kill her. From then on, you became wrapped up in that weird thing. And you went back and bought one on your own. Took it home. And Green knew we had to get it away from you before anything else happened. The sight of him touching your idol threw you into... Well, you told Devil what to do. Devil. Our school was seven years ago. It's raining, it's raining, there's pepper in the box. Like I said, four score and seven years ago, our fathers had brought forth in this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Watch out for the dog blind. You all right, Sweeney? Now that you're here. You didn't think I'd let you get very far away from me, did you? Well, Miss Lang? Yolanda? She doesn't even know what's going on. Stick here. Come on, Virginia. It's all right. Here she comes. It took me about five minutes to spot those holes in Green's story. Later. That's right. You're not my doctor. You haven't got a white coat. I know. I go and have my rest now. I'm 23. Somewhere, Bill? No, thanks. 